Hey everybody, welcome to Carbon's DIY Garage. Last week I uploaded a video on replacing the front and rear suspension, so the shocks and springs for my 97 Jeep TJ. And that video was a little long. It was about 30 minutes long, and uh, I'm gonna post uh, a link to it up here or over there. And um, if you wanna go watch that, if you haven't watched it yet, it's got uh, chapters in the description for the video, so you can kind of jump around if you want to. But I realized it was a pretty long video, and I realized folks may not wanna watch it. So I've gone ahead and split that video up into two separate videos, one for the front suspension and one for the rear suspension. So this video is going to be replacing the shocks and springs on the rear of that Jeep TJ. And the uh, rear upper shock bolts are what really give people a lot of trouble. So I'll s spend some time on how I managed to handle that on this particular Jeep TJ. So in the description of the video, I still have some chapters posted so you can jump around in the video if you're interested. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome to TDSR's rear end. Well, okay, that didn't really come out the way I meant, but this is the, the rear suspension for the 97 Jeep Wrangler. And the first thing we're gonna do is remove the bolt here for the sway bar links in the rear. So you can disconnect the rear sway bar. But the thing everybody talks about are the shock bolts and the uppers. And there they are on the uh, driver's side, right next to the fuel tank and pretty difficult to access. Uh, if you have extensions, it works fine. And if the bolts come out just fine, um, then it's not an issue. But um, if you snap a bolt, which is really common, you have very few options. Um, one of them is to drop the fuel tank. But if you look at my fuel tank, the skid plate here is just a rusty nightmare. Yes, eventually I got to do something about that, but I do not want to do that today. So dropping the tank is not going to be an option. I have a couple of backup plans in my head, um, but we're just going to have to see how it goes. One thing I've been doing for the last week is putting PB Blaster on these bolts on both sides, but PB Blaster is a liquid and it liquid, thanks to gravity, wants to come down. So it doesn't, I don't really think it's going to weep up into the threads very much at all. The other thing I did is I put my life on the line and I don't really recommend this for everybody. Um, I did put some heat on it last weekend to see if I could break it free and I'm probably going to do that again today before we get started. But this is the challenge area. Um, otherwise it's um, a spring and you can see that uh, I've got a this spacer here at the bottom and hopefully that comes off pretty easily. I'm missing the bump stops so I actually have some of those that I bought and uh, put those in and then the, the shock mount just with one bolt here that uh, if you can get it off great if not you can just cut it off and I'm gonna replace it so that's the lay of the land these bolts look pretty much the same on the other side access is maybe a little bit easier but uh, still just as challenging um, gonna do the sway bar links first and then gonna go after these bolts because that's gonna set the pace for the rest of this activity so I'm gonna do this on both sides and uh, Okay, I'm going to try to get some heat going on these bolts and see if that can help break them free. So why in the world go through all the trouble of uh, putting heat right next to the fuel tank to try to get these bolts softened up? The reason is that the uh, threads that you're trying to get them out of is uh, basically a nut welded to the bottom of the frame up here and there's really no easy way to get to it um, some people will lift the body a few inches to get to it um, some people will like i said drop the gas tank um, but nothing is really that simple and so you i think your best bet is to go slow try very carefully to get these bolts out um, a lot of people have issues and they snap and that's probably going to happen here but i'm going to try my hardest so now that I've heated them up, I'm gonna use the old, um, back them out a little, run them in a little, back a little, in a little. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if it shows, but this side, um, it's not even in all the way. So I don't know. Um, clearly they've replaced something on this. They've installed the suspension lift at some point. So I don't know if these are the original shocks or what the deal is, but enough stalling. Let's give it a shot.
Well, I find that really hard to believe that both of them came unthreaded from the driver's side. Um, two out of four down. Uh, let's go over to the passenger side and see what we can do there. Well, if nothing else, we burned the bushings. never guessed or taken a bet that all four of those bolts would have come out um, heat plus patience very gently going out a little back in out a little back in take your time for me that's all it took they all four came out I hope everybody else has the same success I did have some backup ideas I will describe those at the end of the video but for now I'm gonna keep moving forward Our next task is to drop the jack and let this droop as far as it will go, keeping an eye on the differential vent uh, tube, make sure that doesn't get overextended. And um, yeah, you guys watch that, I'll go drop the Jeep. Not the Jeep, go drop the axle. These are not gonna come out on their own, so I'm gonna have to use spring compressors on these also. So I wanna show you guys this. Um, for the spring compressors, there's really only one spot over here where on this side you can get it to go in, and this, uh, it's if you have the, where you put the socket up here at the top, and then you run the bolt, the jack screw on the bottom, and there's this little cutout in the cup, and that's the perfect spot for the spring compressor, and I don't really think there's any other place to put it besides that. So sad to say, I missed getting the removal of the spring uh, um, video because uh, basically I had to push this down with all my might and um, I actually removed the jounce cup from here, which made it easier because then the spring, when it came out, I could just kind of pull it towards me and, um, and get it out. So. Technically, I don't think it's required, but I think it helped me out. So that might be something you try doing. It's a 15 millimeter socket. And uh, I had been spraying it with that bolt um, from this pocket up on top. You can actually spray down into the threads with PB Blaster for the last week. So it came out reasonably well, but got the spring out. So now we'll get the, uh, that guy out. So before I go start putting anything back together, I, ran a am running a tap uh, m8 by 1.25 through all four of the upper shock uh, bolt while well, they're they're nuts and then i also ran a m10 by 1.5 through the um the nut where the uh, jounce cup bolt goes and i also ran a, a chase the threads on that bolt with a uh, die as well so i'm going to reuse that bolt but uh, Hopefully this will help the bolts come out easier if I ever have to do this again. The new spring is in. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that this rubber isolator, at least on the driver's side, it came off when I took the jounce cup off. Um, that also it has to go back in, so you've got to find a way to get the spring compressed small enough to where you can get it up in there, but you've also got to get this rubber isolator on top and it has to go in just the right spot as well. So it took a little bit of finagling and kind of sitting on the 
uh, brake drum to get it to open up enough to where I could get the spring in there, but uh, it's in there now. I'll take the spring compressors off and put the Jones cup and uh, the new bump stop on. bump stop um, it just really sl snaps into place it slips into place um, just have to press it up in there I put some uh, red grease on it just to help it go up there a little bit easier all right we're doing the best we can with views uh, shooting through the brand new springs actually and uh, I put anti-seas on the brand new M8 bolts that we're going to install so let's go ahead and get this uh, shock mounted. I cut out a whole lot of time of me struggling to get the lower shock um, bolt in place. The, um, the bracket here gets squeezed pretty tight and so you have to open it up and um, using pliers and everything it just took a whole lot of time to get it open enough to uh, where I could get this all straightened up and put the bolt in. But now I've got the bolt in, I'm going to tighten it up, go up here and, and tighten uh, and the um, upper bolts because I didn't get those all the way tight. I just wanted to get it all set in place first. And then uh, then we'll be done and I'll do the other side. All right, I've got the rear sway bar links reinstalled. The Jeep's back on the ground. Uh, it's all taken care of. It took me about six hours to do the rear end. Um, this one, you don't have to do one side and then the other like you do in the front. So in the rear, you can just uh, do it on one side, go do it on the other side. Um, thankfully, the, the bolts didn't seize up in the uh, shock mounts. Um, I told you I'd have a backup plan, and that backup plan was, uh, I'll leave a link in the description and also up here, um, running a bolt through the frame, actually, a uh, half-inch bolt right uh, um, where the, the shock actually mounts uh, underneath the body and going with uh, basically a side mount instead of the uh, direct uh, mount in the top. So didn't get to try that out, but that's okay. Uh, I'm really happy with how this all worked out. And the Jeep's up, obviously sitting a little bit taller, so uh, that's also great too. Thanks for watching, hope the video was helpful. Uh, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel for more content like this and a whole bunch of other things. And hit that notification bell, of course. And it was a long day, so if you're interested in buying me a coffee or a, at this point a beer, uh, there's a link for buymeacoffee.com in the description as well. Uh, until the next video, you guys take care, have a good one.